As you're probably aware, DLSS has improved quite a bit over the past few years. We've moved from DLSS 2 to 3 with this frame generation and other exciting things built into it, as well as a much better visual quality, motion blur and artifacting improvements and things like that. And in this quick video, I'll show you how to update older versions of DLSS within games to much newer versions to get a much better looking visual experience, especially if there's a big jump between what comes with the game and what you can actually put into it. So without further ado, in this quick video, I'll be showing you DLSS Swapper. DLSS Swapper is an open source tool that allows you to just, well, swap DLSS versions for different games. By default, it picks up a bunch of different Steam games, and for most people, that's more than good enough. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the GitHub page, where on the far right, you'll find the latest release, click this, and choose the installer or the portable version, which you can unzip and run without actually installing it. And once it's done installing, you'll eventually see a screen like this when you start it up. It picks a bunch of different games that are installed on your system that you can already see the DLSS versions for all of them. You can pick a game and choose a different version to swap to. It's that simple. The first time you start it up, you'll get a warning about anti-cheats in games, and obviously anti-cheats are going to be unhappy, especially if you're doing this for something like, well, Call of Duty. I definitely wouldn't recommend that, as modifying game files in any way for a game with an anti-cheat is going to make the thing unhappy. Oftentimes, though, as these are all official NVIDIA DLL files that we're downloading and swapping out, anti-cheats usually won't have an issue with it, but obviously you don't want to risk anything. So for that matter, I'd recommend only sticking to single-player experiences and things like that to get the best experience. And of course, some versions are newer than others. As long as the game has DLSS built into it, odds are you can probably update it, if not update it quite a bit. You can even take DLSS 2 games like, well, Rust for example, and bump them all the way up to DLSS 3, if not 3.7. There's a ton of compatibility between different versions of DLSS, and as long as the DLSS version that shipped with the game isn't too old, you can oftentimes update it all the way up to the latest and get a good visual improvement for free. In order to download different versions here, you'll see little download icons next to all of these. Head across to the library section on the far left. In here, you can download any version of DLSS. I'd usually recommend downloading just the latest by clicking the download button to the right of it. Once it's done, you can head back to the games tab over here where you can then select a game and just swap the DLSS version by clicking it and choosing swap. That's it. The next time you fire up the game, things should look, well, better. There'll be less artifacting, better visual clarity, especially while looking around and moving. And that's going to be especially noticeable if you're jumping from a much older version of DLSS. There may be some weird things that break here and there, but it's not too often that I've experienced that. Usually it's just a general visual improvement. To give you a quick look, I'll fire up Ghost Runner with the default version by selecting it and choosing reset, which takes us back down to 3.1.3, which shipped with the game. Then I'll swap to the latest version, 3.7.20, and you'll be able to see the difference visually. Unfortunately, you're not going to get too much of a boost in FPS, if any, as your PC is still rendering the game in the same resolutions based on your DLSS quality settings. It's just a visual clarity and overall enhancement versus whatever you're coming from. So, first of all, Ghost Runner 2 with the default settings. In game, I'll make sure settings, video, DLSS is turned on, and we have the DLSS mode working really hard, pushing the game up from a super low resolution up to our full 2k resolution just to make sure nvidia dlss has to work as hard as possible i've got it set to ultra performance for a game upscaling from 480p it really doesn't look bad at all and especially through scenes with a lot of movement things may look a little bit weird as we're upscaling from just 480 running through the game things look pretty good especially as we're on dlss 3.1 already and moving up to 3.7 there should be a small but noticeable improvement throughout general gameplay so without further ado let's go ahead and skip straight to version 3.7 and in our dlss swapper i'll swap to the latest version 3.7.20 now when we start up the game there should be an improvement in how the game looks, albeit a little bit smaller than a jump from version 2, for example. Unfortunately, things like frame generation we can't just retroactively add to DLSS 2 games, at least currently, but that may come in the future sometime. For now, though, let's see if there's an improvement. Everything's still the same. Let's start a new game to have the same cutscenes and see if things look better. So here we are back at the start. I would say there's an improvement with how things look already, but we can only really notice that through general gameplay and most of the time if you have a side-by-side. -side. But throughout general gameplay, yeah, I'd say things are probably a little bit better. Yeah, I think things look quite a bit cleaner. 
So why not do this kind of thing with all of the older games that supported DLSS? Well, yeah, why not? There's a pretty good improvement pretty much across the board. FPS, though, obviously hasn't changed too much, if anything at all. That's really it for the super quick guide. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Chopper Shoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.